you are running it as a sole trader you cannot allow the salary that you pay yourself at the end of the month it will not be recognized we call it in taxation a non allowable expense an allowable expense none non allowable so i cannot expense. eat my money <laughs> <laughs> if there is an individual that I know who understands taxation inside out, it has to be our guest for this episode, CPA Wangeshi Waro. With this creativity, Ukonayo navigating the business, even talking to the CEOs, have you ever considered opening many businesses? Then you open one for KRE. Let me eat this one. Wangeshi's story qualifies as an SI unit for starting from the bottom. Were it not for me, getting out from Kirinyaga coming looking for a house help job, I'm to be a maid as they call it, eh? I won't be the person I am today. I won't. CPA Wangeshi's knowledge on taxation matters goes hand in hand with business knowledge and experience. Kahaya, I will do it in the day, any time. Risk si kona mingi sana si katai. Iyo ni business enye ukiona ni kama hata magari mebi ya suvizi mekua kidogo, you start sourcing. Because you don't want at any time you call it. Na unapata hii kaha ya ndio imekuzalia all the other businesses. On this episode, we are going to focus on diversification. Like, what's the truth about multiple sources of income? And we get to hear that from someone who actually practices it. If you sell ice cream, then you should also start selling umbrellas. When it's raining, people will buy umbrellas from you, right? But when there's a lot of sun, nobody will buy the umbrella. They want ice cream. So one business supplements the other. This is another episode of How Money Works that includes the strategies to start a business from scratch and how to navigate the business environment once you're in. Why would you want to invest, like give your time to, to a business that people have accepted it's going down? Na kwa ile mambo yetu ya plugging if you happen to like any of my outfits any outfit you see me coming out with in public in this production or any other production we have done please allow me to plug you to Zmax Enterprises a top men's clothing store in the Nairobi CBD wako located at Pioneer Building right next to Iron Dam uh, and directly opposite Poster House I'm talking high quality fabrics I'm talking woza kimataifa vitu international na bei nzuri sana Zimax is one of those stores where what you order versus what they deliver actually match. I'm um, I'm sharing their contact supper so just in case you feel kuna kitu imekubamba feel free to reach out feel free to make enquiries and don't even get me started about their after sales services. So in short kitu ikikubamba consider yourself plugged. I'm your host Dr. Kingori and here's another reason to stay subscribed to our channel. Come on how just subscribe. Now is a good time to hit subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. Uh, most of the guests we've had uh, mm-hmm. on the platform ama on the show wamekuwa na kitu fulani ya encourage entrepreneurs pay yourself first pay yourself first when you get money mm-hmm. from biz- from your business uh, unachukua um, you take um, you, you allocate yourself a salary right mm-hmm. and then as a profit in separate you reinvest in the business yes. so now i've been struggling with something and mm-hmm. i promised myself to ask you this when you get this sit down mm-hmm. you've allocated yourself say a hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Ukajilipa nayo. See so that comes as a salary? Yes. Ah, yeah. Your business tena ime, ile ingine imebaki ni profit you will, you'll invest. Yes. Will you be taxed on the money you paid yourself mm-hmm. from the money that will be taxed as profit? Now, we have different sources of income. Employment income and business income are two different sources of income and they are taxed differently. Mm-hmm. So if you're getting a hundred thousand per month, that is employment income and it is subjected to pay as you earn pay as you earn is deducted monthly from what you earn as an as an individual it is graduated there is a way we compute tax on an individual on graduated scale rate okay but for the profit from the business that is different if you're running business as a sole trader or alone mm-hmm. you will also be taxed at the end of the year graduated so for employment income will not be subjected to double taxation because you're taxed every month. So at the end of the year you will be taxed on the profit that you made on your business. So those are different incomes. Kuna money tenant Pay yourself first. This money that you're paying yourself with, 
is from the business. You just allocated yourself a portion. Uh -huh. You will pay pay as you want on the portion you allocated yourself per month. Now, what you what you allocated is your employment income monthly. So it is not from business because for a business to run, you must have salaries and wages that you pay monthly. So you are an employee of the business. So the business pays you as an employee. But okay. at the end of the year, now there is a profit that will be subjected to tax. And we also need to understand here that you may be running that business or running that business as an individual or a body corporate. Mm -hmm. If it is a limited company, that a separate legal entity running on its own. Mm -hmm. And there is you who is the director or the shareholder or whoever you are. Mm -hmm. But if you're being paid, that one is taxed. And it is the obligation of the employer to deduct the pay as you earn from your earnings. So I am my employer, so I deduct myself from my earnings from my company. You know, the comp company and you are two separate legal entities. Now you are working for the company. So the company's income will be taxed if it is a limited company. At the end of the year, after we've deducted all the salaries, the running expenses and whatever, whatever remains is called the net profit. Mm -hmm. If it is a limited company, it will be taxed at 30%. Okay. But you, what you're getting monthly... Is not part of business. That is your employment income because you're employed by the company. I myself at 30% you as you You know, there's a lot of pretending in this company. Thing. Uh -huh. I've registered my company in the NIE Citizen. I did all that. Yes. It's a limited company. Yes, it's uh -huh. a limited company. Yes. I bring business, nitengeneze pesa, unless someone pays me a million. Kwa a million, nimesema, this is a million. Mm -hmm. uh, let me pay myself. 100,000, mm -hmm. my salary for the good work I have done. Yes. So, I pretend my company is someone else and I am someone else. Did you know 30% <laughs> you pay as you want? Alafu, at the end of the year, mm -hmm. I will be taxed on the profits. That is this 900,000, assuming, I'm doing blanket numbers, uh -huh. cumulatively for the rest of the year, assuming business is that good mm -hmm. in that context. Mm -hmm. Right? So, how is that not double taxation? Do you know once you form the company, you are not the company. The company is on its own. That's why I'm using the word a separate legal entity. The company and you are two different people. So the company is running, but there are people who are helping it run, you being the one. So the company is paying you a salary for the work that you're doing for it. So you are taxed as an employee. But at the end of the year, it is the company that is taxed on the profit that is realized at the end of the year. At 30%. But for you, pay as you earn. You are not taxed at 30%. Pay as you earn is graduated, where, for example, if you earned your income in the year 2023, 20, maybe January, mm. your first uh, income will be subjected at 10%. We have graduated 0 to 2880. We tax you at 10%. Mm. Then we move on to the next 100 mm -hmm. at 15%. The next 100 at 25%. And the balance at 30%. So you are not taxed at a flat rate of 30%. It is graduated. But for the company, the net profit is taxed at 30%. That is the gross income, or we call it the gross profit, less operating expenses, whatever remains is the net profit, and the salary that you're paid as a director allowance or whatever will be deducted from the gross profit to get the net profit. So the net profit is the one that will be taxed at 30%. So to avoid all this, I'd rather eat my money individually. <laughs> Expand as an individual, uh -huh. gradually. Instead of introducing another entity in the name of a company mm -hmm. to share the, the, the nini with me. But you see, if you started it now not as a limited company, you, you're, you're running your company as you, mm. and you make your gross profit at the end of the year, then you less the expenses. Remember, if you're running it as a sole trader, you cannot allow the salary that you pay yourself at the end of the month. It will not be recognized. We call it in taxation a non-allowable expense. An allowable expense. None. Non-allowable expense. So I cannot expense. eat my money. <laughs> <laughs> no, as in, I uh, make a solo trader. Mm -hmm. So I cannot count my, the money I pay myself as a salary. As an expense. You can't. 
you can't uh, deduct it when, when you are computing your, your taxable income at the end of the year, mm. we will not deduct the salary that you paid yourself as an operating expense because you are the owner. You are only using a business name. So you and the business are one and the same thing. Okay. And if you come to my class, I will tell you the advantages of running it uh, you, as a sole trader mm -hmm. and advantages of running it as a company. Okay. Yes. Sawa. Uh, I don't know whether you've understood. I've understood. Okay, okay. So now, if the advantage of paying yourself, mm -hmm. does this mean ujifinya mishara ndi usifike kwa tax bracket iko high, then we kule ikiwa profit? As a sole trader it, or no, as no, a no. company? As a limited company. Uh -huh. Then instead of paying yourself 200,000, I'm a 500,000, mm -hmm. ndi upigwe 32.5%. Uh, you pay yourself 20k mkutane kana profit. I can tell you there are many people who are thinking the way you are doing because right now I think I have some cases uh, mm. in the tribunal mm. where you find you own a company, maybe you are two directors, but you don't pay yourself salaries. And you know if you don't pay yourself, KRE is losing, you're not paying the payers you earn. And then at the end of the year, you declare loss. And remember you cannot pay tax on losses. So the taxman is asking, how are you surviving if you're not paying yourself? Yes, una matunda. <laughs> <laughs> how I, are mm -hmm. you surviving? So mm -hmm. whatever you are saying, eh, mm -hmm. in tax, we call it tax evasion. You are trying to evade tax. That's why you are even paying yourself 20,000 and the company can comfortably pay you 300,000 mm -hmm. because you are evading tax. Okay. You don't want to pay pay as you earn. Okay. And then at the end of the year, remember now what happens at the end of the year? You, you report loss, meaning you are not paying tax. So the tax might goes without getting anything. You are running a business, you are not paying pay as you earn, you are not paying tax at the end of the year because you've declared a loss. Okay. Yeah. So uh, in our last conversation, we discussed tax evasion and tax, tax avoidance. Yes. Tax evasion is illegal. Yes. Tax avoidance is, is exploiting the loopholes yes. in the system. There's one loophole that um, I recently had that what we uh -huh. The idea yeah, uh, when you're going to um, do the accounting of mm -hmm. your tax, I'm um, filing the tax returns, uh -huh. uh, you take the receipts of the things that you had bought, mm -hmm. right? And then you um, declare them as a business expense. Mm -hmm. I'm told that when we pick up in that, at the, I'm, I'm not sure, kindly correct me if I'm wrong, at the, now, if you want to declare something as a business expense through the receipt, mm -hmm. you have to declare at the point of sale, mm -hmm. I'm at the point of buying. The e teams. You know, actually that was not tax avoidance, that is evasion. Where you're using your personal expenses, you claim them as business expenses. And that's why they say, if an expense has not gone through e teams you cannot claim at the end of the year because it will be out of populated. So somebody could go buy a very good furniture for the house mm -hmm. and then that expense, you bring it to the office, you claim it as an expense. Remember, the more expenses you claim, the lower the profit, the lower the tax. So people could bring expenses from all over or even inflating the expenses. You only incurred an expense, maybe 200K, you show it as a... Uh, 500,000, you see? So that was, a way. so the government is trying to prevent the tax evasion. Mm. Because when you claim an expense that you are not entitled to, mm -hmm. you're deceiving the taxman and you're evading tax. Okay. That's why now they know with e -teams, eh, it will be very hard for you to evade. Okay. Eh, okay. But I can tell you Kenyans, you still find something, but once you're caught, you know what happens with tax evasion. Oh. Yeah. So uh, there's something I saw in your book, we'll talk about it uh, as we progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at how to identify opportunities uh, to collect taxes. Mm -hmm. And one of the things listed, mm -hmm. one of the formulas listed mm -hmm. is self confession. Yes. Is that what I think it is? You Unenda know, kujiseti kwa KRA. Is that? Kujiseti. Mm. Actually, even right now, if you open your iPage, your personal iPage as Kingori, mm. you will see somewhere you've been given voluntary disclosure where you disclose what you've been earning. Because now it is like you want to do things right. And doing things right is declaring what you are earning as an income. If you had rent or somewhere, mm. which you are not declaring as your income, mm. now you've been given uh, something uh, by KRA, voluntary disclosure. Disclose that I've been earning uh, rental, but I've not been paying tax. But now I want to comply. I want to start paying. So that's basically KRA's version of as a good Christian. 
<laughs> As in, sister, I, uh, I've eaten this money for some time. So, uh, Actually, if I were asked, I, I, I could advise KRA. That is a very friendly approach. Rather than you go find some houses, then uh, digging deeper, you find it some, someone's uh, houses. Then you come tell them, this is what you need to pay. You give them an additional assessment of a lot of things. Eh? Pay this, pay this, pay this, pay this. And this person is not able to. Mm -hmm. Then you find the next thing, they have raised an, an agency notice. An agency notice is where you cannot even withdraw your money from the bank. They give a letter to the bank. This PIN, uh, any money that they owe, you will be collecting it for us, this amount, until we are done. This person right. cannot withdraw anything. It's happening. We have so many cases right now, they are on my table. KRA can do that. It happens. You've not had anyone. Actually, if you eat your money in secret, they will come <laughs> for you eventually. Yes. It will happen. And right now, there are so many ways. So what you saw in my book, I was saying how they come to know about your sources of income. Someone with, with something we talk of self-confession, and that's why we are calling the voluntary disclosure. Mm -hmm. And then you may find somebody who is your friend turned enemy going and telling them what is happening. And these friend turned enemies, we call them most of the time, your ex-wife, your ex-husband, your ex-girlfriend. Because now something happened, they may decide to go and tell KRA about mm. your secret. So once mm. they come get you, you pay a lot because there are penalties, there are interest, then so many things that you will be charged on. Mm. So that's why they are saying, Gillette to bring mm. yourself, tell us is this and this and this. We will give a very friendly uh, payment plan. We mm. sit down and agree, how are you going to pay us? And we will not charge you the penalties, we will not give you the fines, we will, not, we will just allow you to pay the principal tax. Okay. There's, here's where I see the lack of good faith. Mm -hmm. Why do they come at you when you have money? Why can they re keep a record of when you were poor? Why can they keep <laughs> a record yeah, when you had nothing? And then so, so when I get money, we pay back Kwanzaa. We revenge and then we meet. Isn't that good faith? Let me tell you one characteristic of tax. Tax is levied where there's an income. So there's no way that we call you upon to pay tax when you're poor as you say it, as you when you don't have anything to pay. You can only pay tax if you have the means to. And the means to is you have that income. So mm -hmm. there is no way KRA will come to you if you don't have money to pay. And we call that principle of taxation as a principle of equity or canon of equity, where you pay tax in accordance to your ability. Mm -hmm. So there is no way KRA can tell you pay this amount of tax if you're not able. Only if you have evaded and they have evidence you had this income and you refuse to declare it. So nobody can come to you when you don't have income to pay tax on. They only come to you when you have an income and you're not paying. And that's okay. why we say give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, the idea behind mm -hmm. tax. Mm -hmm. Like, let me give you a prime example. You earn half a million yes. on paper. That means that's 350,000 after tax mm -hmm. without the other deduction at 30%. Still, you know, mm -hmm. 50,000. But in your head, you earn half a million. Mm -hmm. On paper, 350,000. Why does KRA do that? Why can't you just tell me you earn 350,000? KRA, and the person who has employed me. Is it 500 on paper so that you can feel the pain? Like in his setup, yeah, kila mtu lazima siya uchungu. It's a new form of suffering. Actually, it is called pay as you earn. And taxes have not started now, even during the time of Jesus. You remember these things of Zakayo? <laughs> the tax has been there. There's a, a, a history of how tax started mm -hmm. from way time back. So it is not now that KRA want to punish us. And that's why you hear we call it pay as you earn. And we are saying give Caesar, even Jesus said it, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Caesar, <laughs> Caesar, Zakayo. <laughs> Just confirming. No, my, my Zakayo mind was the tax collector. <laughs> but ah, when we yeah, say give, <laughs> I will not comment further. In the layer. Mm -hmm. But when we say give Caesar what belongs to Caesar, I know mm. if I'm earning a hundred thousand at the end of the month, mm. this money is not mine. Mm. There is a take home because there is something. Because remember, it's the government who have given you that platform. You, if there was no law, if there was no order, you would not be able to run that business. So because of them, they've given you a very good condition that you can run your business and so. So paying taxes is when you make this money, they tell you, you have to share it uh, with you. 
For example, we define employment as the relationship between an employer and the employee. The employer will the employee will be rendering services to the employer. Mm. The employer will reward reward you for the services that you're giving, and the taxman will share in the reward. Okay. Because remember, were it not for the government, you'll not be able to run that business. Mm. So that's why we tell people at the back of your mind, when you're making an income, no, it is not mine. Okay. All of it. Yeah. There is a portion that needs to go to the government. Okay. Yeah. So what informs these percentages? Of course, you talk about gradually. Yes. But what informs the percentage? Uh, the harder you work, the more you pay. In this sense, mm -hmm. uh, at any income past half a million is 32.5%. Mm -hmm. We are chasing 50-50. Mm -hmm. So this is almost, when I go to work for 30 days, 15 days, I'm a civil servant. I work for government. What informs these percentages? Now, for the percentages, what, what I can say, it is just like you, you found a formula being applied. Because what they do, it is a formula that is there. But the way it has been, that we have different, we classify uh, taxes into different, we have progressive taxes, mm -hmm. we have proportional taxes, we have regressive taxes, we have degressive taxes. What happens, eh? there is a way they compute that. Because they say it will be very unfair you are earning 100,000, mm -hmm. I'm earning 20,000, and then we are taxed at the same rate. The one who is earning less will feel the pinch more than the one who is earning more. And that's why I said for an individual, it is graduated. Graduated in a way, the higher you earn, the higher tax you pay. There are some people who do not even pay tax at all. For example, now, if you are earning 24,000 and below, you are not paying any tax because they are trying to bridge that big gap between the rich and the poor. So uh, the formula of graduating, that's what I was uh, trying to explain. Eh? It's something they came up with to satisfy the canon of equity. The higher you earn, the more tax you pay. Or the higher the income, the higher the tax. But now they cannot come with a flat rate. So you find each and every country, they have their rates of how they charge taxes. Mm. So uh, I don't think there is something that informs you, let's start with 10 and yes. not 15, let's start with 20 and not okay. 5. So I think it's during the policy making, that's when they sit down and they feel mm. this is how it should be. And it should be applied uh, by everyone. To put it politely, okay. guess what? <laughs> Thank you. Nini, um, your story starts... Uh, the juicy part mm -hmm. of your story and the journey you've taken in business yeah. starts as a house elf. Yes. Where does the transition come? How do you find yourself uh, working as a house elf? Mm -hmm. And where does, let me use the word epiphany, because now we tradition Bible times. Where is the epiphany? Yeah, I can actually be something better. Let me tell you, it is all about self-belief. And that's why even I tell the girls, the boys that I mentor, where you come from or how your story started does not mm -hmm. determine uh, where uh, it is not the one that will determine the person you will be in future. Yes. It is all in you, mm -hmm. mindset, and how you believe in yourself. Personally, I knew. You know, Kingori, I tell people, you didn't choose to be born where you are born. I never chose to be born where I was born. Mm -hmm. I was born wherever I was and, and then found my mom, my dad, my family, and whatever, and that's the lifestyle I found. And now I started with it. But there is, as time goes by, you realize eh, if this is how we are, I can change this. Because I can tell you, I always tell people, God is not so uh, unfair that he may choose you, choose the other one and not you. You see? So what happens? Eh, sometimes I tell people, discipline is one thing. And then believing in yourself and believing you can be anything that you want. Because if I really looked at my background the way it was, I would not be where I am today. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I finished school and my parents were not able, you know, you cannot now say they are not able to, 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 to take me to school. Let me now sit back. I had to sit down and think. They did a very good job of bringing me into this world. Then what? So I worked very hard in school, but they were not able to take me to high school. So what? So I decided I can look for something that I can do, save some amount of money, then take myself to somewhere I can do, even if it's a small cause, maybe it's a, maybe designer, materialing or whatever, just to make money for myself. Actually, that was my idea. So when I left Kirinyaga and came to Nairobi, I was coming looking for something that I will do to do some saving and then take myself to do a college that, uh, to a course in a college that I know this is mine and I can it can sustain me and help me 
make a step further. This so is after high school. After after high school. So after you, after parents, primary. Yeah. Uh, actually, high school I was paid for by well wishes. That was after primary. After primary is when you That's came to Nairobi looking for a course. Yes. Okay. Looking for a job. For after. Okay. So a relative okay. brought me and took me to a house where I, I was to be a house girl. But now when I went there, you know, when you interact with me two or five minutes, it is enough for you to know so after I, I explained to them why I'm looking for a job and so actually they had a house help and they wanted to release her so that I can come step in but when we talked with them from town to where they were living in Luakabete, by the time we, we arrived we had interacted enough with dad, I call him dad because he adopted me after the talk he came talked uh, with the wife then the following day, he told me uh, they went to work. They never released the girl they were to. I think they tell me they discussed it the whole night. So when you are washing clothes outside, they called the, the phone, Yanyumba. Then um, they told me, prepare, we are coming for you. Kingori, I was very scared. I thought now my job is over. Over, sorry. I shouldn't have told them about myself. Maybe they decided to take me back home because I had performed very well in Kirinyaga. Actually, I was among the top. In so, the whole county. Yeah, the whole county. Mm -hmm. So when he came for me, he had gone to the Ministry of Education, told them about this very bright girl who has come to my house. By the time I was getting there, all major TV stations were there waiting for me. Radios interviewed me. And the following day, I had enough money to take me to school. That's how I went to high school. And they adopted me from there. So I was just going home to visit, but I was living with them. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then from there, I went to school, performed very well, uh, went to campus. I finished when I was in campus. I was hustling very hard, even marking papers. Mm -hmm. I paid, supervising exams. You talk to teachers, you're paid. So I started making some money. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing my CPA, the Certified Public Accountant, eh, when I was doing it, eh, the director spotted me because every section I was getting an award, every section I'm topping, every section I'm topping. So they were like, and then they could be the way I was hustling, marking papers, doing here and there. So after I finished, I came back for an interview. That's yes. how I was interviewed and I was taken as a lecturer. Okay. But I was teaching special revision classes. I was not given major classes. Okay. That's how I started lecturing taxation. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. then, so now, okay. Mm -hmm. then, then, then. So from taxation, they took me as a full time lecturer. Mm -hmm. So when I was taking as a full time lecturer, I was doing freelance tax consultancy services and talking to people who are in auditing firms. I get a client, maybe I come talk to you, I can file your returns, you give me some work. I go look for someone who knows how it's done, helps me. So for the second one, I do for myself. So that's how I started freelance, okay. freelance tax consultancy services while I was still lecturing. With time, I bought shares at Vision. You bought shares at Vision? Yes. Before we get to buying shares, mm -hmm. uh, this transition here, yeah, you came to look for work and you were, read, you were, were you ready to be a house help? Like, would Actually, you from up? home, I was coming as a house help. The relative was bringing me to be a house help, not any other job. What's your greatest um, lesson from you deciding to go look for work as a house help and then you deciding to speak out and sharing your story? What I can say, there is something that I really love about humble beginnings and accepting the situation how it is. I'm one person who does not, as in, who will say, I cannot do this, even the way I am today. I can do anything so long as I, it's not affecting my peace, my mind, I can do. And that's why I really respect. Even when I'm walking, I find somebody roasting maize on the road or whatever. Those people really encourage me. And I'm actually attracted to people who do not choose. What you can do anything, so long as it's not taking away your, uh, as in it will not make you be insane or something. So my, my greater lesson I can tell people: were it not for me getting out from Kirinyaga, coming looking for a house help job, I'm to be a maid, as they call it. Eh? I would be the person I am today. I mm. would. So you are, you are, you are. Let's say a house help for just a day. Actually, <laughs> I can't even say a day because they never released the girl. I, I never worked even for a day. Imagine I was coming to be a house girl. I never even worked for a day. But even also speaking out, I tell people confidence will take you places. I've met them for the first time. They were to employ me. And I 
opened up to them and I told them the kind of a person I am, how, how it happened. And so because after class eight, I was to be sponsored at another school in Meru. But when I went, they said, you have to pay school fees for the first year. If you maintain top number one to three, we will pay for you. And then even that money for that one year, I could not raise. Wait. So if I never opened up, where would I be today? They were offering you a sponsorship, mm -hmm. uh, but then you had to pay for the first year. Yes. What's the and basis? You are, because they are giving the very bright kids. So the first year look for money. You maintain position one to three. For the three terms, they will give you full scholarship. So I was not able to even raise money for that one year. So can you say, I'm, I'm a big fan of um, ideas as a Nassim Taleb. Yes. Um, in terms of randomness. Mm -hmm. But then ten about to kupande in Guinea in Chile. Mm -hmm. Do you credit where you are today to the type of people you met mm -hmm. who you were taken to mm -hmm. to um, give you a job as a household? Mm -hmm. Because had you met someone who was not willing to take the initiative to go talk to the Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. that would have spelled a different. Mm -hmm. Amma? Me, what, what I can say, even me being connected to them, it is all about God. I, I would say it, Kingori, because um, when I was leaving home, I didn't know the kind of people I'm coming to meet. But I found God brought me to them. Because actually, the, the, the one that the relative was bringing to is not the one that employed me. Mm -hmm. When we arrived, we found that he has already gotten another house girl. But then uh, the friend of hers had her say that, ah, you've brought another one, but you already have somebody else. Unless now you go with her, when we get somebody who needs, we will give. And she had and said, ah, the one I have, she's very problematic. Let me take this one. Mm -hmm. So that whole thing, I feel like God was at the center of it all. Okay. Yes. Aya, how many businesses do you run today? Hmm. How many businesses do I run? I can say like four, five, five businesses. Five. Yes. Uh, the college, work. I'm a director. Vision, we'll talk Vi about how you bought shares. Yeah, Vision uh, Institute of Professionals. I have an audit firm. Audit firm. Wangeshi Warui and Company, where mm -hmm. we major with taxation. Mm -hmm. I have a car hire business, Bright mm -hmm. Steps Car Hire Services, mm -hmm. the biggest <laughs> car hire in town. Mm -hmm. I have a supermarket. Uh, it's not a very big supermarket like the one you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I also have a wholesale where I also do milling. Okay. Uh, rice selling and uh, it's a wholesale stroke retail. I would like to go down to the details. And I'm here. also Why? a lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> to does it break down moja moja. Uh -huh. uh, I'd like to know why the specific ones. Iso, iso. But Kahaya. Mm -hmm. The riskiest business, the most risky exactly. business you can do. Why? Exactly. Why Kahaya? Um, we say uh, sometimes you run businesses because you see opportunities. And like I told you, I was running a freelance uh, tax consultancy services. So one of my clients was uh, owned a car hire and I was working for him. So I was to stay in his office for around two weeks. Mm -hmm. So during that time, I saw the demand was very high compared to the supply. Mm -hmm. You could see clients flowing in, in and out, in and out, in and out, and there are no enough vehicles. He had over 100 vehicles, but at any given time, we didn't have vehicles. Somebody comes, bringing the car back, another one is waiting. They didn't even have time to do the car service. So uh, I realized that. And then uh, how it was, I realized there was a lot of paperwork. They didn't have a system. Neile too, you're writing on a paper. KCP has come back. You write it down. KCQ has gone. So I saw a lot of um, work that was not well streamlined. And I felt like this is a business I would want to run. Because as an entrepreneur, of course, you want where the demand is more than supply. I know you've done a little economics. So that's... Uh, when I got the interest of running the car hire business. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember that after, after Vision, you know, this uh, lecturing is that, the one that came first. So I was lecturing and doing the free runs. So when I saw that opportunity, that's when I decided I will run car hire one day. But I will not run it Kienyeji way. Sawa. I will do it professionally. Nae Kienyeji, mm -hmm. how are the profits looking like um, from the back end? 
of the business? Because I'm sure the money must have been very attractive. Of course, of how, course. How did they look like in that context? Imagine, Kengori, you're giving a car at 3,000 per day, and at any given time, you don't have a car at the parking. So assuming the car goes for 30 days, that gives you 90, right? Yes. And um, you're paying the owner of that car 40,000. Yes. How much are you making for one car? 50,000? I'm, I'm assuming there are no overheads. Yeah, actually it's 60. Then you, you remove overheads, you remain like 50. So obviously oh, the margins are 100, or oh, 90, yeah, 90. So mm -hmm. the margins, the margins were very high and the demand was also very high. So you feel like if I run this uh, business professionally, I can even maybe make more than this. Yes. Okay. Yes. And what informs mm -hmm. how much? Mm -hmm. What informs how much you pay the owner of the vehicle? You know, uh, when you're doing the computation, you can't make an assumption that the car will go 30 days because you are not giving it to someone who is staying with it. Mm -hmm. They are working. Somebody comes, hires today, mm -hmm. uh, brings it back. It may not go to work tomorrow, go the other day. So on average, you may say that car will work maybe for 20 days. Oh. And if you give a 3,000, that is 60. So if you pay the owner 40, at least you have 20. Oh, so so you cannot means, work with 30 days because you're not sure the car will go for 30 days. So 30 days is assuming 100% success rate. Yes, 100%. Ah, yeah. So assuming, let's say it's the same type of car going for 3,000. If you have 100 cars, mm -hmm. that's, if they all go, that's 300,000 uh, 300, in a day. Yes. In a day. Yes. So your profit is in assuming nothing bad happens. For 30 days. Uh, things happen. <laughs> no business is that smooth. Because I know right now, maybe the one who are listening and say, hey, Kahaya is a very good business. But let me tell you, it's not easy. Sometimes accidents happen. You are struggling with the insurance. They don't want to pay you. Sometimes somebody came, uh, took your car. They went doing crime with it. Uh, the, the, then you, you see it, it is in the police station, you go there, before you get it out of the police station, there's mm. so much involved. That car may be there for a week or two or others even. Like, there's a car that was, uh, I gave to a friend, gave to another person, then the car went to TZ. Mm. So by the time we got the car back, it's like two months, Losing and that money. car is not paying you. So you find, you can never find a business that is just giving you money, 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 money without risks. And that's why we say entrepreneurs are risk takers. Because mm -hmm. in every business is about taking risk. Because you don't know what will happen tomorrow. You invest your money. You don't have your ready customers. You don't have, your, you don't know what will happen, but yet you put your money in. So every business, let, no, let nobody tell you mm. there is money that comes easily. That's mm. a lie. The frustrations, the risks, mm. a lot. I've also lost cars, uh, I've also had cars that got accident and insurance refused to pay. And maybe amazing. you are paying loan on it. You continue paying the loan because you don't want to spoil your relationship with the financial or the bank. Mm -hmm. So you find... As you're getting in much, there's also so much that is getting Going out. Out. So it is trying to balance every business. So there is no way. Okay. Uh, thank you for explaining to us your, how you, what inspired you to start specifically the Kahaya business. Yes. Then the next uh, thing that I'm interested in, how was your entry into the business and what are the risks you dealt with? Hey, let me tell you. Entry. I started with one car. The car that I was driving, the car that uh, my consult tax consultancy services bought for me is the mm -hmm. one that I started with, mm -hmm. just one. And I could not afford an employee by then. Mm -hmm. So I was doing everything. I'm the receptionist. I'm the one who is checking the oil, changing mm -hmm. the tire, doing all those things. As the mechanic, am I, you used to take it to the mechanic. <laughs> you need to be specific, Alpha. <laughs> Not as a mechanic, but you mm. know, when somebody, when the car comes and there's a client waiting, you mm. have to check the oil. Mm. Do you go looking for a mechanic to, to come check oil for you? You put oh. that thing and you check. If you come in the morning... You to a lipstick at night and to check the oil. Let me tell you something, King Ori. You've come in the morning, you found the car has a flat tire. Will you stay there waiting for somebody to come help you out? And you're running the business. So you but I thank God because when I was starting, I started with a girl. 
she's a, a very daring girl to me. So she's the one who was serving client and I was out. But with time, we were able to bring another employee. So we mm. were three. Mm. But with time now, we are where we are. To go interested <laughs> Papa, with time. Uh-huh. With time. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you probably, because I know Bright Steps, I'm sure say, you already are playing at the level of the one who inspired you or beyond. Sindio? At least 100 cars. So how do you move from... Why are you saying 100 cars? You want KRA to... You may say at least. Oh, okay. KRA okay. your friends. Okay. So now, uh -huh. how do you move from the first car uh -huh. to the next one? I talk to people. I told you confidence is everything in business. So when I started the business, I could not afford to buy a car. And now mine is working, so I'm using my tattoo. What would I have done? I see Kingori has a car that he parks in the morning and goes with it in the evening. I come to you, sell an idea. Tell you, Kingori, if you give me this car, at the end of the month, I will pay you 40000 mm -hmm. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So I, I do much with you. Some, especially the one I went to, he had taken that car with a loan. And he was paying, I think, 24000 per month. And I told, him, told her, see, if you give me this car, I will be paying you 40000 It pays you a loan, 24000 And you are left with something. And I believe that money, you cannot even use all of it in transport. You will remain with some money. Meaning, from your pay slip, they were deducting 24000 It will never be deducted. So you have saved that. And you have enough money. When you want to use the car, you hire only on need basis. But coming in the morning, parking it, taking it in the evening, it is not making any sense. And she bought the idea. She gave me the car, told another friend. That friend gave me. I went to people I knew, my colleagues who had vehicles, talked to them. That's how I, I started my business. I think within two or three weeks, I had eight vehicles. Eight vehicles? Yes. So weren't you scared that if people don't hire, you had put yourself in, uh, let's say, a bill of 240000 <laughs> at the end of the month. Now he's him, Chezo. Let me tell you. I had done a lot of research before I started, eh, when mm -hmm. I was still freelancing and saw what was happening. Mm -hmm. And like I told you, I had seen the demand was more than the supply. The supply. So I knew ah. if I marketed myself well, mm -hmm. it will work. And I was ready. For the whole year, I never paid myself. Mm -hmm. I for was the just whole year? For a whole year. I was, I was depending on the retail I was getting from my freelance and, and lecturing. But for the business, it never paid me anything. No, wait. <laughs> In three weeks, you have eight cars. Yes. So I'm assuming yes. a year has a lot of three weeks. Yes. Assuming you get eight cars every three weeks, by the end of the year, you have a lot. You don't of cars. get them every three weeks. That time, it's, I think it's because I sold that idea to people who had not known so. about it. Sour. Yes. So how do you, the demand outstrips the supply. Yes. How do you go for one year without making money? I was making money, but I was plowing it back to the business. Oh. Because now if I make like an extra 200, I go to the bank, give it as a deposit, they buy for me a car. Mm -hmm. Because now I have something that is sustaining my day to day. I'm yes. okay. Yes. yes so yes. why would I take that money? And then use it, and I'm growing the business. As a director, I'm as a founder of a business, mm. sometimes you have to sacrifice a lot for you to see it somewhere. Because I cannot start business today. And because I've made 50000 now I go clubbing or doing whatever I want with it. No. That money, I put it back to the business by expanding it. Otherwise, if you don't, and now you start enjoying what you're getting, you can't go beyond. Because from the research I did, many car hires could not go beyond three years. Yes, you can go do your research. So then, if a car cannot go beyond three years, mm -hmm. the average loan duration for a vehicle is four years. I'm not saying a car. I'm saying car, the businesses. The, the one running the, the businesses. businesses. You start a business, car hire business today, and within uh, three years, you've closed. Why? Reason being, like I told you, you gave me a car. Uh, I'm paying you at the end of the month. So the moment that car gives me that 60,000 and I'm supposed to give you 40, I don't give it back to you. I feel like it's my money. Then I go investing or using it, doing with it something else. So if I don't pay you one, two, three months, what happens? You can't pull your car. Mm -hmm. And then others do not maintain the vehicles. You give your car, it, it is new. Of course, it cannot be the way it is 
because it's using every day and every now and then but they don't don't maintain the car you don't do the car service you don't do what so within a year you cannot even look at it it looks like and and actually that is the thing that is out there when somebody here as you say i'm taking my car to a car hire the, the word they use utaichukua ikiwa mkebe reason being the ones who are running they are not doing it professionally like me i have my own mechanics i have my own garage so when the car is not good the mechanics are there to check on it mm-hmm. so i i found that it's a failure to maintain the vehicles and failure to pay the owners of the vehicle mm-hmm. you see so you find within the first year you get more vehicles but people are coming pulling it and you know the moment the reputation ama the knee goes out there you're done and that's why even even me in, a, in this interview i can say if you brought a car to me and i misused it or i refused to pay you can come out and say mm. yes okay nasema hapo kwa kaha ya business pull out game is on top nini when you go when you go in uh, let's say for example with the first year the break there's something called the break even point yeah of a business uh, which of your five businesses gave you the the the, the closest ama the easiest ama the fastest break, break even point, point? I would say kahaya. Yeah. But you get nothing the first year. Yeah, the, not that it was not making money. I was just putting it back, putting okay. it back and trying to expand. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But uh even even for example, let me talk of uh the the supermarket. Uh for the supermarket it took me like a year for it to break break even when you are able to pay your suppliers, meet the expenses, mm-hmm. do what what what. For now now to know now I've climbed and making something because you know the sales continues increasing increasing and then also your purchases are going up so you find within a year you are able to see now I've stabilized now it oh. is full now it's just adding what is getting out so yeah uh, between the supermarket and the car hire business mm-hmm. what are the things that borrow from each other what are the similarities between the two businesses uh the two businesses number one i'll say not even the two businesses but all businesses consistency is key what you give to your clients make sure you stick to it you have to be very consistent for you to to be able to move or to expand that is number one. number two, you do not just give up easily for a business you can wake up tomorrow and decide you'll close imagine i remember there is a month uh, even my employees were worried like today a car gets an accident two days another one another one you know like you are like what is not happening if you're not strong enough you can give up then you find somebody hired your car then you're being called your car uh, is here in the police station we found it with eight eight sacks of bang and then for you to get it there now you have cases after cases after cases another time you're told is this your car yes it's my car it has been doing human trafficking those are the challenges that you face in business every day and maybe that's car hire you go to others for example when i started my wholesale business there is a time it was stolen I woke up in the morning all stock is gone. What do you do? Do you give up? You learn every day and that's when I knew I will never run a business without insurance. I started insuring my businesses. So you learn as time goes by. Mm-hmm. But you cannot just give up. Every business has its own risks. And if there is any business that does not have risk, tell me one. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're the best person to talk about diversity. Mm-hmm. Diversification. Yes. And ukiongea okay, about supermarket mm-hmm. there's a hater out there wondering kama anatengeneza pesa kwa gari ni pesa gani anatafuta kwa peremende <laughs> for someone who does uh-huh. not how understand how the supermarket business work mm-hmm. works please give us insights on why you decided to go through that uh, mm-hmm. to go through with that mm-hmm. and uh, how for someone for a beginner what's the entry point you know something that I've learned kingori oh uh, that's why you see the rich people continues to be rich Do you know why um opportunities are there but what people lack is capital or they don't have have the means of how to start mm-hmm. when i started the car hire i was in a position actually uh when i started the for the school school was helping me because i'm getting my in my salary lecturing was giving me my salary at the end of the month so i'm able to pay my my expenses and so but now when i started the car hire 
um, I was able to start another business mm-hmm. because Kahaya gave me the capital to start another business. You get? Mm-hmm. So you cannot stick to one business. And, and I learned this during Corona. You remember pandemic? Mm-hmm. 2020, Corona hit very hard. And when Corona hit hard, uh, Nairobi was locked. You remember? Nairobi was locked. You could not go out. And people hire vehicles to go outside Nairobi. Kingori, you cannot go come to hire vehicle to just go around Nairobi. Maybe you want to go visit mami, you want to go, you are going for a meeting, you are going whatever meetings, no meetings, time ya corona, so nobody can hire. You cannot travel to Kakamega, you cannot go to Kirinyaga, you cannot go wherever. So I wake up in the morning, going to my parking, you, the vehicles are looking at you like this. Mm-hmm. All of them are mm-hmm. there. The owners need to be paid. You need to meet other expenses. The first thing I, I did was to write to the owners of the vehicle. You have seen the directive that the president have given. So the vehicles are not working. So what we can do, you take your vehicle, once the Nairobi is open, bring it back. Or you let the car stay here, it is safe. If we get somebody who will hire the vehicle, even when things are like this, we will be sharing what we get. And I can tell you, I think nobody took the vehicle. I think, I think only one person. All the vehicles I had, they have full trust in me. They said, watch a gari kai hapo. Because even if I take it, I'm not taking it anywhere. So I'm seated there seeing my employees going round. Eh? And I'm like, now what am I going to do with them? Very fast I had to think. They said, uh, for vehicles carrying essential are not uh, restricted. They can move. And I had to think very fast. That's when I started milling rice. I started rice milling. I come from Kirinyaga. Pishori comes from where? I did put, I went to Enda Stereo, shopped for something, and went to Kikuyu, put my, my, my whatever there, my rice meal. These people who have my vehicles, some goes getting rice because it's essential. You only needed a letter. I went to Central, and OCS gave me a letter stamped so the vehicle can go. Go get rice, bring it, we mill it, and start selling. That's how we started rice milling. So these vehicles, which are on the parking, I told the employees, each takes a vehicle. I will be fueling it in the morning, and we will be doing door-to-door supply of rice. Mm-hmm. So wengine wanaenda utawala, wengine wako roiro, wengine wako kikuyu, wengine wako api. That's how we, wengine wako rungai. And I'm telling you, I had to add another employee mm-hmm. to help us supply. Mm-hmm. So it peak sana. And that's when you are supplying Kingori, do you sell anything else? Do you do mafuta? Do you know, you know people, they were locked so people were staying in the house. Mm. So when my employees told me that, I'm like, okay, that's another opportunity. It mm. has presented itself. Mm-hmm. I went to these major manufacturers, talked to them. That's how I started there. Uh, the, the, my, my supply, the retail, and, and I felt like since I have some cash, let's start it as a wholesale and retail. And that's, what I sta- that's how I started. Okay. And now you are doing wholesale. You are supplying these things to your customers. Uh, and then this person tells you, I want to close this supermarket. Unajiskia. Mm. Another opportunity. So imagine if you're given that opportunity and you don't have money, will you be able to do it? You won't. So the reason why you do all these things is to find one complements the other in uh, my, my finance lecturer told me when you're doing business eh, do not rely on one when one stands on its own think of another one and you use the word mutually exclusive projects this mutually. project mutually exclusive meaning do not have kahaya here kahaya evo at least start a different business for example if you sell ice cream then you should also start selling umbrellas when it's raining, people will buy umbrellas from you, right? But when there's a lot of sun, nobody will buy the umbrella. They want ice cream. So one business supplements the other. When this one is low, this one is up. When this one is up, this one is low. For example, during Corona, it is because people must eat. So manfa- and, and, and processing rice stood for me. So even mm-hmm. if the kahaya was not doing, mm-hmm. this one did for me. And that's when it clicked to me, I cannot rely on one business. I mm-hmm. will have to try everything. So I found I'm in education. Now I'm in transport. Mm-hmm. That's how it is. Now I'm in general business. Yes. 
then you, you try then i'm in consultancy i'm in whatever i know this one will supplement this this one is down this one takes it's evil like that because don't think because you are running business you're so rich now you can just sit back and watch anything can happen mm. but if you have like two businesses moja itakushikilia ingine ikiwa chini so the secret diversification is learning am i coming up with a strategy on how to play hide and seek with bad luck as in kujipangia shetani shetani akinikuta na covid nitatoka na nitatoka na pande hii you you need you need your areas as in lazima ukae mtu anafikiria sana na that's why waambia mtu usikae tu na feel content because now i have a business no Mm. King you can see I'm also an author that's my book mm, mm, mm. when you sit down you think what can i do like hii ni kitu watu wanataka kujua people want to know about tax and whatever they are student kama taxation is a call unit in all university all colleges so what do i do this book is a uh, it's selling kama sahi i'm sure hata sahi naongea people will call me because there are people who are still waiting for it mm. so that's why i'm saying when you're young Uh, I, I use this I don't know how to say it in English I'm very um, I'm not very good in English I remember my shosho telling me okorori aga with the meaning when you're old you will be enjoying the fruits of your youth as in work very hard now that you're young a time will come you'll not be able to work that young uh, that hard so what I will make when I am young is what I will enjoy in my old age so by the time I'm retiring I have enough that's very different from what i've had what have, have you as had much fun in your youth so that when you're old <laughs> when you can't do it it depends what kind of fun you're talking about i also yeah. have fun it's not that i don't have fun okay but it is you it's you can okay, well, there's nothing that makes me happy like seeing my student coming to tell me i want you to be my mentor as in they are inspired but what, by what i've done or mm-hmm. what i'm doing Mm-hmm. You see and that person want to achieve and tells you when I grow up I want to be like you and I'm tell it's not that it was brought on my mm-hmm. table mm-hmm. actually if there was someone who had given up it's me because my, my I, I looked very hopeless that time but I was hopeful you see when you want to change people's life it will make you work very hard for example me my driving force is changing people's life because I feel were it not for people I would not be where I am today So my driving force is God has given me the ability. Why don't I use it to touch somebody's life? Nibadilishie mwingine life yake the way God changed my life. Mm. By God changing my life this way, I'm able to change you. How do you think I feel going to pay school fees for a boy or a girl who have who had given up my parents are not able. Somebody did it for me. I have to do it for somebody else. How can I do that? Working very hard and that's what I do. But mm-hmm. doesn't mean now nijisa how. No, I enjoy life actually. Sawa. And um this there's, there's a growing vibe mm-hmm. that uh, education in Kenya is sort of like um one of the key catalysts to poverty, right? <laughs> somehow somehow uh-huh. like uh-huh. education is almost useless to some extent because fe- people feel like we have very many graduates who don't have a job what separates you from someone else who did the same course but doesn't have a job today actually musema i cannot call anyone poor just because they are not where i am i will be lying to myself if i did that what i can say i think number one, uh, mm-hmm. we are talented differently mm-hmm. And number two, um, there are some people who give up so easily. By the way, I saw somebody saying that university degrees are useless. Not all. And I tell people... Some. Are you saying some are useless? <laughs> <laughs> to not clarify it again. I know where you are taking me. I'm not going there. <laughs> uh-huh, I'm not going there. Mm-hmm. What I'm trying to say, mm-hmm. everybody wants a bright future. Everybody wants to... Have a good life. Yes, a good life. Mm-hmm. But we, we are talented differently. Mm-hmm. And I cannot say I'm better than anyone. No. Sometimes it, it takes God's favor and um I think Mungu anakuhurumia and chooses you. But even as that happens, eh, you have to sit back in Mori and show me what are you doing that you want God to bless. I cannot just sit back. And now if I sat back ni say ah wenye tumemaliza na wao shule wamepelekwa high school. Mimi my parents are not able so I just sit back. No, I had to think ni seme hata kama sitaenda secondary kama wao mm-hmm. naweza fanya kitu 
and I uh, nitengeneze future yangu you see so mimi choosing kwenda kukua mboch ama kwenda kukua house girl sorry to use that word because mm. i i have so many people who will be watching these ama who are watching these eh? mm. by you choosing to humble yourself to that level knowing what you want will take you places i have a problem with people who chooses what they do kama unaona mtu ako na nguvu ako na nini mtu aezi hata kazi ya mjengo aezi enda Mtu aezi hata endesha pikipiki. Mtu aezi enda anunue mahindi marikiti auze ama uende ununue makaa uanze kupimia watu. I have a problem with those people. But people who are able are ready to do anything regardless of who you are. You humble yourself down there. I'm telling you those people. God blesses what you do. You cannot just sit back useme hakuna kazi mm-hmm. wenye mnaambiwa uko na degree na una kazi. So mm-hmm. what? I remember another time I was giving a sermon in church and I was telling them this slogan ya smocha imekuja na a graduate si ndio ametoka mm. Nairobi University ametafuta job amekosa ni Nairobi ama Jaikwa is it Jaikwa all I suspect ni Jaikwa <laughs> I don't know how Jaikwa people survive on that thing <laughs> but endelea let me know sasa yeye akaona nitashindanga niki drop CV sipati kitu ikamkujia watu wanauza mayai kando ya barabara wanauza smokies what can how can i do it differently akaona if i do chapati then ikuje niweke nizo smocha hizo eh anaeka hizo vitu mpaka kachumbari akaanza kutengenezea watu imekuwa sijui mpaka wengine sasa wameanza kuanza the same mm. he made it mpaka watu waka, waka fry, mpaka watu wana queue kwenda kumnunulia just because he decided to humble himself mm. and chose to do everything mm. he didn't worry even people who don't worry putting that under their nails as mm. in those are the people that we want but ukikaa useme niko na degree niko na masters if i don't get a job i won't that's you mm. but the ones who humbles na anaamua hata pale kuuza makaa anaanza kulea kuku anaanza kufanya nini those people go places okay. so i want to change people's mentality hiyo mm. akuambiwa ma degree si lazima atijulienda degree ulienda ukafanyia hii lazima ufanye hiyo no think make a difference in okay. your community in the society make difference for you and people that are surrounding you okay yes um there, there is, what was your i'd like to know what was your revenge your money revenge prayer in this sense uh, meaning there was a day there was a time uh, i think that was 14 years ago mm-hmm. there's a road niliyake i wanted unaona kasarani kutoka kando ya there's a road that comes from thika road mm-hmm unateremka unapitia kasarani unateremka police station una unateremka there's a mtaa hapo la Kisama unapasua unatokea side za Dandora mm-hmm. I, niliekea hiyo barabara wanted and I see that Mungu akinionekania mm-hmm. I'll come and drive kwa hiyo barabara ile school by my, my car just to feel hiyo eh, just give myself like mm-hmm. like energy in my heart you understand mm-hmm. I've not done yet yet but I find I should probably make it an event mm-hmm. did you have something when uko unaambia Mungu kinionekania okay hii hata ufai kuambia Mungu ya kupigia mwili pole when you get money <laughs> mimi hata nikwambia i think vitu zimekuja zimejipanga pole pole mm. let me say but obviously i had that desire of making it and i was really looking forward for the time i will see me doing things to people that others are doing for me i think hiyo mm. ndio nilikuwa nataka nasema the moment the, the day i will get much money sitaitaka kuona mtu anasafa if i have money mm. i will be coming through for them but i'm telling you when you're doing all the all that eh, vitu zinaenda zimejipanga because mm. right now i can drive the car i want mm-hmm. and i thank god for that you can live wherever you want you can do all things this but you see now all this is coming after a journey and also after touching people i tell people all that money that you make hiyo pesa unaangalia kwa account yako unaona hivyo hiyo pesa si yako peke yako there are so many people who need you in this world kuna watu wengi wengi sana wanakuhitaji and there is something that um uh, it is in the pipeline that i'm doing kuna kitu kubwa sana nataka ku mm. and it is related with me helping these people who are not able to be mm. where i am mm. knowing where i started where i am and i'm not saying ati lazima ukue umetoka from a poor background for you to do these things no mm. kuna wengine nimeona umelelewa in a very good life and whatever but you choose to serve humanity you choose to change people's life me i think you ndio naambianga mungu never allow me lack even a single day 
because there is so much that this world needs me for. Mm. Yes. Okay. So that is my driving force, changing okay. people's lives. Now, what is it about Kirenyaga? Because this is too much of a coincidence. <laughs> uh, uh, one of our guests on the show, very good vibes. People love that episode, mm -hmm. Damawa Mobile Spares. Ah, yes, she, she's from Kirenyaga, I didn't know. She is from Kirinyaga. I didn't know. <laughs> and she runs this country as far as mobile phone spare parts are concerned. Mm -hmm. Her story, Nayako, Ikoneo element ya Kirinyaga. Mm -hmm. What is it about Mademo Kirinyaga? Because it's, as in, I don't think we've done 20 episodes and already two of our guests come from the same county, mm -hmm. but story and determination na kukuja kuvuruga Nairobi is the same. What is it about? <laughs> Nairobi, Nairobi na watu na vuruga. Ata kuna mtu aliniambia what is Kirinyaga? My MPs ni, ni wanawake, my governor ni wanawake, wanapigania, everything. Sujui kama hata yu merealize. Ni ma, unaona governor nani na nani alikuwa na pigania. Mm, na kuna pia hizo ma, ma top Angalia ma MPs. Governor wenu chances sir <laughs> anaenda kwa hizo ma top seats. Uh -huh. So you okay. see, mm -hmm. me, I, I don't know whether it's the background or what I can say about it. Uh, but I think the way we were brought up, sorry to say. I know it's not all. But I think when you tulilewa tulikuwa tunaona our moms were very hardworking. Even compared to our dads. I don't know. Uh, that's my imagination. Because you statement. may find maybe the one who was here, story yake ni different. Me, I'm giving. Venye mimi nafikiria. Because mm. I've seen, by the way, I think wakirinyaga, I don't know. Kuna that element in us. That's a strong statement. Hard. Let's qualify it. <laughs> your moms were more hardworking, sometimes more than your dad. Let's qualify that statement. Not, uh, let me say, uh, like 20, me, 20, let me tell you, me when I was growing up, eh, let me give my example with myself because mm -hmm. I don't know about the rest. Mm -hmm. Me when I was growing up, eh, my dad was a serious, serious. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, we get it. Alikuwa uh -huh. na sana. So, unapata mamangu ni anajua mnakula nini, unaenda shule aje, how things are. So you see, she was very hardworking. And she kept telling her, same case with my shosh. As in, mm -hmm. unapata ni kama unaona, aijaekwa ni nyi mkae tutafutiwe na baba yenu. Unaona, mm -hmm. you have to work hard. Whether it's bringing it on the table or not, you must work hard to bring it on the table. You hmm. see, to bring food. I don't know whether that's it, that's but common. mimi naonanga ni kama yo pia mimi ni nisukuma sana because I could see the way my mom was living and I was like... <sighs> Did, uh, have you ever at one point before you got an, a light yeah, by the by the something could happen like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. did you at any one point accept poverty at one point I, I, don't, I, I won't say accepting um, I don't know how I will put it but unaona ni venye mko uko ushago maybe mko shule unaona watoto wako rich wako aje wako aje nyinyi mko vile but mimi I was very content with Nilikuwa very contented with what we have. Mimi, I think my driving force was, this is not the end. I can change this story. I think yon ime ilikuwa ikirin kwa maende yangu. Mm, mm. And I knew even my parents na nitawabadilishia life. That's what I believed. Nilikuwa na amini mimi nitawachengia. Hii life they were not able to give me, I can change it. Then, how do you, what was your definition of rich in Kirinyaga? Uh, giving an example with Embu, where I grew up. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm a citizen of Embu, but CI uh, massive. Mm -hmm. um, Embu Mali nili grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, rich was, but mm -hmm. kinyesha, unakuja na gambuti za watoto. I think that for us was rich. Uh -huh. uh, rich sasa next level was, wazi wala sol, wala watu walikuwa na bike home. Like, oh, when you're playing. <laughs> that was rich for us. And then sasa, at some point, uh, growing older kidogo, so we knew rich. Come on, uh, shout out to Baba Kevin, Baba Nduta. We knew he was as rich as President Moy because <laughs> Alikwana, and this was me in my head, Alikwana Gari and Alikwana Motorbike. So I don't know who planted that seed in my head that at Moy Akuna Pesa, Moy Akuna, akuna Gari and Akuna Motorbike. So Baba Kevin, Baba Nduta, Alikwana, Gari and Alikwana Motorbike, so Baba Joe and Moy. For us, mm -hmm. that was rich. Nini mulikuwa mna define riches? Me, I think, what venye tulikuwa tunaona, watu rich kwanza ni watoto wa walibu. <laughs> <laughs> Madoo. Unaona, eh, eh. Eh, ve, 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 watu watu wa, wa walimu, unaona, hey, awa ni wadosi, ama una, unapata, awa watu maybe in the morning, wamepikiwa breakfast, wakona lunch, wakona supper. 
you know wako na viatu every now and then labda umebai waka kiatu kamoja unakasukuma sijui mpaka kakatae mguu ama kaishe kabisa so unaona huyu akona kiatu leo akona ingine kesho wengine unasikia wako na gari that's how we defined it as in mimi ni kwa naona hey, au ni wadosi au wachana na wao zote ni okay but was it that bad yeah kama hao wanakuanga na breakfast that was a big deal of course it was a big deal It was a big deal. So what was your first time? What was your first interaction on a breakfast? <laughs> Uli jua breakfast din. <laughs> When did breakfast I'm come? I'm not saying atia tuko tuna tunakunywa sometimes mko mko na kangombe madhimi bia na kamua na wapikia kachai hivyo but it's not that I don't know. Ngombe yenu ilikuwa inakamuliwa part time. Because that's how it sounds. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes Because inakamuliwa. Eh, mna mko na kachai jioni mko na kachai asubuhi kama hakuna hakuna. So that was it. But you did not accept at any age. This is the life of Ah, pana, me sijawahi accept failures. I believe yo, I, I should learn. Me everything that happens good or bad, I get a lesson out of it. And I can tell you the lesson that I derive from everything is a positive one. Mm. Yes. Mm. Now, um we, we, nini? This this businesses that you do. Mm-hmm. Do they have to come to Uh, returns that the same magnitude ama you understand each business at its level hakuna biashara sometimes you feel like oh this now becoming a license what can you find ama you're getting of course i understand the diversification mm-hmm. i understand what your finance lecturer told you yes like yes. right mm-hmm. and if you can scale because mm-hmm. still hata kwa kaha ya peke yake the demand outstrips yeah. supply right yes hakuna chart you can scale to 200 vehicles 300 vehicles to get more money Because compared na supermarket which it have patia labda less compared na actually let me tell you kwa businesses kuna yenye unaputingi more efforts on because like me i cannot compare the car hire and the business no and and the car hire i will do it any day any time risk siko na mingi sana sikatai you see and uh hiyo ni business yenye ukiona ni kama hata magari me bsv zimekuwa kidogo you start sourcing because you don't want at any time ukose na unapata hii kaha ya ndio imekuzalia all the other businesses mm-hmm. so to me lazima utakuwa na ile main na utakuwa na zingine even if they are not main okay so kuna ile yenye inahitaji more input more emphasis more okay. because even there is unajua kama supermarket maybe shop lifting eh? you take care of that and whatever but you see kaha ya risk ni every day every day every day every but you day. see eh, the higher uh, The, uh, the highly profitable businesses eh, they are also very highly risky kama ujai jua zenye mm-hmm. mpaka mtu kama kuna wengine maybe wanaona una run kaha ya mtu anaenda anaanza but within a year or two anakwambia waangeshi mimi nimeinua mkono mm. because you have to go running how to mitigate risk how to do this how to do this kama saa hii insurance ndio ilikuwa very big headache kwa kaha ya and i had to go talk to ceos the owners of insurance companies one pay a special treatment and a special rate for my car hires of which i've seen it both routes actually mm-hmm. that agreement ni may sign like two weeks ago mm-hmm. so as time goes by lazima unaenda ukijua how will i do this differently how will i do this different i also work very closely with dci because okay. you cannot work alone so okay. my main I, i can say when you have different businesses mm-hmm. yenye unaona mm-hmm. iko na higher returns eh, you put more emphasis there but doesn't mean even the others are not good because sasa kama unaona hiyo time ya corona and everything at, at last year i don't know what happened Ra, last year mm-hmm. september october november business was very down na jo hizo ni manzaka haya very down and i can tell you during that time it is the supermarket Mm. ndio ilikuwa saa imeshikilia kila kitu. Okay. Yeah, so it is important at least unajua ni gani una put more emphasis, ni gani unafanya nini, gani unafanya, ni gani iko na more so you need more employees there, you need your time there, you need everything. So lazima una you, ka, ka, sababu kama audit firm iko na risk gani. Okay. You see? Yeah. Okay. Na, na, with this creativity, uko na navigating the business, even talking to the CEOs. Have you ever considered opening many businesses? then you open one for KRE and when you let me eat this one <laughs> what do you mean open one for KRE one for them in in your taxes like any money muna ni die you eat here these other ones are mine no i've never because uh, as a tax consultant i know business you need business 
hiyo ilipe KRA yake hii ilipe KRA hakuna mali zina zinaingiana ni every business on its own wewe kama iko na shida deal na KRA kivyako kama ni wewe ni kivyako so hakuna mali ati nitazi consolidate zote ni same ndo hizi hapana okay every hmm. business with its own bank account books of account different employees like that and um, loading up loading up so tumerudi nyuma sasa mm-hmm. you you start you did freelance uh, tax consultancy kidogo mm-hmm. then you bought shares at vision yes. right uh, loading up to buy the shares at vision how did this happen let me tell you at what pushed me to starting the car hire when i joined vision uh nile una join you don't have money but you will be lecturing without being paid for you to pay for the shares that's how i started oh that's how you bought the shares yes you worked for as in you as paid in, for the uh, shares my my, my my salary goes to financing the shares but mm. then after that my businesses has done so well i was even able to buy nikanunua hata mo mo ama yote was there an option to buy the whole of it ukitaka unajua ni mtu kama ako na shares anataka kuuzie kukuzia unanunua Okay what's the business model the Vision Institute of Professionals We just offer the Casneb uh, we we offer Casneb programs NEC programs and recently we have started School of Creative Arts okay. where when ye, maybe work perform vizuri and they are good in arts so we have started ukuje ufanye kama video editing photography kucheza instruments we just launched it the other day You didn't you are not part of the founders no, I you was entered not through shares yes so um, what's this kind of a business that opens up a door for other investors to come in you know why it did that it was almost going down as in there was a very very big fraud that almost made it go down so they were not able to pay the lecturers so they said if you're willing to work for us to be able now to come back to where we are even some people, some many people believed in it ni kama vision ni kwa imeisha So it is an offer they brought on the table. Then they interviewed the one who are interested and I was one of them. Mm. Yes. Now why would you want to invest like give your time to to a business that people have accepted it's going down? Actually it is because of the fraud. Actually I was the whistleblower of what had happened. So when you go through the audited reports you look at the bank accounts you look at the numbers of the students who are there you see the potential but you see were it not for this this is a very profitable business oh. because even after coming back it never took long before everything went up so that's where auditing comes in that's when auditing what comes is in. auditing let me tell you you see even before i touch on auditing controls because auditing teaches about controls in your business because now you may ask yourself um, how am i running these businesses eh? and i'm not fully involved the controls that you put in your business matters a lot for example for me to do that kai as i told you the one that i i had seen there was a lot of uh, paperwork so you sit down with a system developer from the scratch tell them what you want mm-hmm. you pilot mm-hmm. when it works you put it into work yes for example where i am seated i yes. know mm-hmm. from the billing when you are coming to hire a car you have to be billed and after billing you have to pay The, before the contract that you are signing come come out eh, it has already been captured somewhere and the amount of money that you're paying mm-hmm. so you are able to do your reconciliation every now and then mm-hmm. and obviously another thing avoid maybe cash transactions because it is so tempting to the employees and so so your controls ah. matters okay. and auditing is even i am an auditor but i also invite external auditors to come and audit my business basically uh inviting other professionals to come check how you're spending your money exactly not spending <laughs> not even spending mm. how the other controls it may be uh oh, how uh-huh. your payroll is mm. whether you are paying what you need to pay to KRA whether you are losing any money whether any all those things there are different departments that needs to be audited whether your system is okay or that so um and so uh, so getting hiring an auditor Mm-hmm. is now on the professional level. So for people like who are not like in business business but you want to track your controls that's where people get married. Actually I said whether you are running a very small business ya kuuza mboga hapa nje 
ama ni nini unafanya control ni muhimu sana sindi nasema is that where marriage comes in <laughs> ku check checks and balances mm. sawa so um yo ukisema hata mtu amboga ana need auditor not even auditors per se control control is auditing your business because you need to know nimeenda nimenunua mboga ngapi 50 nimezileta hapa nimenunua how much you mm. must know how much you've bought it eh? how do you control kuoza because unajua those are perishable things eh? are you going buying a hundreds zinakuja zinaoza kama kumi zinafanya nini so you see and then number two, if i bought it at 20 i'm selling it at how much so what is my profit and then at the end of the day am i able to put account of what has been left and what i've sold and then how am i making sure mtu akipita apotei na mboga yangu mtu anaweza kuja anachukua moja na anapita nayo you may not know what are your controls so it's basically dealing with the loopholes and aligning your overhead exactly and also making sure you have records Wezi kwa una, una run too evil without thinking lazima uko na records hata even what we are doing lazima unakaa unaona this this is this and then as a business person lazima ukuange na budget lazima ukuange na targets thank you yes dama alikuja hapa akatuambia uruke juu urudi chini lazima utaibiwa it's not a must like kwa business like technically what we do when we are budgeting tunachanga hiyo loophole Yeah, or you budget for theft. Yeah, hiyo hiyo lazima ujue kuna kitu inaweza happen. Like alikwambia it could be true. Unaweza kuwa umekaa hapa unaona uibila unaibiwa. Juu hata unaona hata hiyo kaha yangu venye nasema unaweza pata maybe gari imekuja iko na fuel huko chini. Mtu anakuja ana charge na anaweka kwa mfuko ijafika kwa ofisi. Mm. So when you see something like that una tighten. You go tightening. That's tightening. Exactly tightening. What she told us. Yes. So business two things before we let you go. Uh, before we talk about the book mm-hmm. before to actually wende if you allow us nini one uh, this is the second time or the third time your idea of dealing with overheads to the final shilling has come up in the show mm-hmm. but it also ties to something you've said mm-hmm. biashara zako zina run na wewe uko hapa mm-hmm. uko mahali pengine unataka yes. how do you manage this na tulikuwa tunaambiwa Mm-hmm. Another people who believe mm-hmm. that you cannot run multiple businesses to the same success rate. Mhm. the same success level. How have you managed controls? Again I go back there. Because like I told you, for example, I don't know for the college I go there like once in a week. And that once in a week that I go, it's having departmental heads meeting where you go sit down as the management you you get the reports you discuss you do this and that because you find uh, for example uh, sorry to say as time goes by like us there's one person we terminated because we realized there was something that was happening so what happens when you have your controls eh? for example the systems that runs my businesses eh? my employees no one has access to the reports apart from me and the system administrator where we can go open there and but i want you to give me your daily reports so i'm able to go open my reports as per the system because you don't know you are just selling but you don't know pesa ni ngapi but at the end of the day wewe uko na yako yenye inakuonesha this is there so when i go open my reports ni on sales for the day was this man yenye ulinitumia ni hii difference inaingililia wapi because mm. unajua everything must part through the system Okay. And you know now kuchanganyikiwa if you sell something na uja pass through the system you know the customers are there you may not know ni gani nilipeana bila kupitisha so sometimes mm-hmm. kama kuna kitu ulipeana hivyo unapata kuna excess mm-hmm. ukipata there is excess now you know there is something either kuna kitu inauzwa ipiti kwa system or something is happening so you must have a system that is working for you ah yes, yes. in church they call that confuse your enemies Yeah it's confusing. Unaweka mchanganyiko maalum so someone doesn't know where to steal. Yeah from. you don't know nikifanya hii nitapatikana ama nikifanya hii what will happen hii kienda hivi you see unless you employ an auditor by mistake. Unajua kukulia juju ukitafuta mtu pia pia kitu. Hai kuna wenye wanajua like now kuna forensic audit nafanya ya mwingine pia ako na na wholesale. Wafanyi kazi wake mmoja akakuwa mwerevu. When you are coming to buy akompaka na till number yake ana change the time 
anaadjust time ya computer narudi nyuma ikirudi nyuma anauza ukikuja kulipa anakupatia hiyo till unalipa then anarudisha time so siku moja alisahau kurudisha time awange kai jua juu ukikuja kuangalia report for that day inaingiana ungejuaje people are that clever yes so when you hear the matter telling you utakosa kuibiwa these things happens these things happen i've heard of another one yeah. you open a club you cover all the overhead alafu eh, your manager comes with their own stock exactly actually i have a personal friend amefanyiwa hivyo ilikuwa na club huko ruiro they sell their own wanauza zao unaona watu wanakunywa na stock yako iko so that's part of risk i'm up here yo okay uh, yeah, hey, those, those are the risks and that's why i'm saying eh? even if you are saying you are employing the best who are running your departments eh? sometimes your business needs you and i tell people i was talking with somebody who came seeking for tax advisory services in my office today and i was uh, we were discussing with him na ninamwambia listen i think you only let me tell you anytime you're doing business i i sometimes i wonder whether you can get people who are 100% trustworthy na ukipata mtu kama huyo that's an asset hold on to that person Mm-hmm. and support that person because getting these people are very hard very many people anakaa wakisema hakuna kazi hakuna kazi but getting a trustworthy person it is very hard um which question i do ask i think nime, nime, there's Nini, something uh, diversification like you have explained your story yeah budgeting for theft uh-huh. nilikuwa like how you <laughs> manage to run the business ukiwa hapa eh na ndio nikakwambia yeah the system the system works for you and then you also need a very good but also the business needs you okay nimekumbuka what i wanted to say nilikuwa nakwambia was telling him who was in my office eh? give professionals a chance to do their work for example if somebody maybe amekuja akisema contract was like this but you, you you have you have not done what the contract says you have lawyers who interpret that for you You make sure allow lawyers to do their work, mm-hmm. allow tax consultant to do their work, allow auditors to do their work. So in your business usikue kila kitu. Allow them to do. Maybe you may part with a small thing at the end of the month. That's what nilikuwa namwambia. You may have a tax consultant or an auditor. It's not specifically me, somebody else. Mwenye anakuja weekly or monthly anakuangalia how the books are. Mwenye anakufanyia reconciliation zako, anaweza ku trace tunaita audit trail. Anaweza trail kutoka ordering to the time it went out to the customer. Anaweza kufanyia hiyo kazi yote. Huyo mtu hiyo ndio kazi amesomea. So badala ukae hapa ukifikiria I'm very good my, my my controls are tight everything is okay allow the professionals to do their work bring them in at a small fee but you will be sleeping comfortably wherever you are mm. and like you had said when you are starting about business paying you nilikuwa naambia mtu if you are running those many businesses what you'll do make sure every business ina kulipa salary yako at the end of the month inakupatia your direct allowances or whatever okay. you are getting it wewe make sure hii inanipea hii inanipea hii inanipea hii then let the business run it on its own at least wewe you are getting your salary and you are paying your pay as you are and you're okay then the business let it let it run at the end of the year you are able to come compute see the profit This is the profit that the business made and all these things when you unalipa when you wanna kuja kusaidia consultancy nini auditing you are claiming it as an expense so it will not be part of your taxable income so allow professionals work for you if okay. you cannot outsourcing ni kitu ya maana so if you decide utakuwa kila kitu kwa biashara yako uta mm. fail vibaya sana okay. but ukiwa na tax anakwambia hii lipa hii lipa kama KRA wako na query si we unajibu mm. this is the person who is answering so i'm saying in any business allow the professionals come in and do their work i cannot be a system administrator i can never develop anything so it is good to bring that person to it for you mm. i cannot develop a website let me bring somebody who can do it for me mm. see at you want to be everywhere okay thank you before we talk about your book the latest version and how people can get it this is like a comprehensive guide to dealing with uh, transition in your business yeah. very well written very beautiful illustrations but then um could you say final thing mm-hmm. could you say that uh, sometimes taxation could be a, a, a leading cause of unemployment i'll explain 
it's very expensive to have employees. Because I believe when you give someone formal employment, there's some responsibility that comes to you as an employer exactly. to KRA. Yes. Can you say that taxation or the taxation laws we have could also be a contributor to unemployment? What I can say, there's something we call tax planning. Uh, Kama employers, we've been hit very hard. Because sa unaambiwa NSSF, unakontributia employee, anajikontributia. Housing levy, unamukontributia, anajikontributia. So mm-hmm. you see, so ikifika hapo, unapata your wage bill is going too high. And you, you find some employers are relieving, ama they are reducing their employees. Others, they've decided, let me outsource. Let me tell you what it means by outsourcing. Instead of having an accountant, whom I'm paying 100K or I'm paying 70,000 or whatever, I'm paying this, uh, let me outsource. Comes to a firm like uh, ours, tells us, we want you to be giving our accountancy services. You know, when you go do that, they will only be withholding 5%. Now, I'm going to stress here, NSSF, housing levy, na hizo vitu zingine zote. So, so I would not say, somehow, tax in a, in a cause unemployment in a way, I would say, because kama sisi we had to sit down na see what are we going to do. Because unapata this what you are paying imepanda hadi yuku. What do we do? So you see, mnakaa hapo mnafikiria mnaona unless we release one or two employees ndio tuweze kuketa for e bill yenye yes. government yes. imetuongezea. Yeah. Yes. So in a way it is causing. And I think this is something we tried explaining. Number two, it has made people convert from employing to bringing in consultants because they are only withholding five na wame mjitolea stress ya hizi vitu zingine. So mm. at the long run unapata the government is losing more than it's gaining. Thinking watapata pesa mingi ndiyo wana lose. Na ndiyo tunaita it is very contra, uh, counterproductive because you think you are making this but then you are losing it on the other end. So you find at the end of the day mm. that's what's happening. Because that we say the moment goods goes up because of taxes eh people reduces from as in kama mtu alikuwa ananunua 5 kg of sugar mtu anapunguza takuwa anachukua mm. mibika kuota kana msukuma mm. so as a trader i've lost sales na kama nime lose sales eh, the vat that i was giving to kra simepungua okay. because sales imeenda chini and then the corporation tax at the end of the year itakuwa kidogo so you mm. find they may end up losing more taxes mm. than collecting more okay. so what i can say the what government is currently doing mm. it is very counterproductive and they will sit with you another day here and you may find they may not even uh reach the target they had planned to interesting yeah and now here's a comprehensive guidebook to public uh, finance and taxation uh, it's public finance and taxation made easy imeandikwa na CPA Susan Wangeshi Waroe you can grab a copy uh, do do you distribute through Nuria Okay. You need to check out Nuria bookstore. Okay. Nuria anafanya very good uh, work in promoting uh, local authors. Are and he has an, I believe a nationwide network okay. that could distribute vitabu. Okay. And I think I'll need to link you up with him Dr. Mian Please do. Please, do. Uh, please find this book, the latest version. This is part 1. You know? Yeah, that's this is the volume 1. We are in this volume 3 now. You're in volume 3. And it will be out in the next two weeks. Okay. Uh, Wangeshi is very active uh, on the social media platforms, Facebook, Bright Steps Kahaya. You can reach her directly, her business. And uh, get yourself this one. Kama unataka kukua in the good books, understand the game, your taxation, and how it affects your business. Asante sana for Thank making so time much. for us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Aye. Asante sana for sticking with us up to this point. I hope you enjoyed our content. I trust this was time well wasted. Uh, come out just subscribe to our channel. Please consider joining our family by hitting subscribe and turning on the notification bell. We have so much good vibes already uploaded on the channel. We have a lot more coming through. Otherwise, I'm your host, Dr. Kimori. See you on the next one.